Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your silicon idiot for the evening. And uh, yeah, so after I kicked up a fuss purely at myself and uh, spent a whole weekend trying to fix something, it turned out it was a driver issue and I was mistaken about that. And the manufacturer released a new driver and all of my recording software works again. So that is good, I guess. Well, it did mean I had a whole big uh, complicated brain time over nothing, but that's irrelevant. So let's jump right back into Xenoclash. We good? Alright. The Corwin of the Free. These are the most abject and miserable creatures I anywhere beheld. One can hardly make oneself believe they are fellow creatures and inhabitants of the same world. I take it you don't like Corwoods then? If you won't try to find coherence in the world, have the curtsy of becoming apathetic instead of affecting others with your pointless actions. Why do you hate the Corwoods so much? They're just insane. I wish that were true, but each one of them has chosen this. You know he has a really remarkable amount of ass for a man who has sat on a throne for a vast and indeterminate amount of time. We aren't so lucky this time, Deidre. We won't get through the woods without a fight. You hear that music? It's Chinero's music. And it gets most Corwoods all feisty. And what are you so happy about? It's the music. It gets to me too. If we get rid of Chinero, the other Corwoods will calm down. So one thing I really like about this is that um, Gat is in this weird halfway place. He's sort of Corwood and sort of not. He's... I mean, for one thing, they will fight him the second they see him, no matter what. Um, for an, but, you know, he is still... The people who aren't Corwoods seem to think that he has become a Corwood, but the Corwoods don't seem to accept him, because they don't fight each other the same way they fight him. Um, but we'll continue talking about that in a second, hopefully. First, I want to talk about why this is a frustrating fight. So, um, introducing a new mechanic here, which is this guy. As long as he's dancing and singing and making his music, uh, the rest of them can't be knocked out, which means they can't be eliminated from the fight. Uh, which means that really you need to get rid of him first. You can't actually fight him the way you fight anybody else, because if you get close, he knocks you back with his constant spinning. And uh, most of your attacks will miss, even if you're as close as you can get. Which means you have to shoot him down. And the problem with that is, of course, what happens if you get punched when you have a gun? You drop it. This makes this kind of just an irritating fight, since you have to constantly run around avoiding all of these guys while you try and get into a position where you can actually fight them, uh, but you also can't fight the guy who's the problem properly. I think if you could hang on to your guns under certain circumstances that would be... Uh, it would work better. I love that he completely charges up that slam and it just never does anything. I love his scraggly beard as well. Although it's kind of funny. Uh, you don't often see things like pubic hair in games, in game designs even. If you have a character who's not wearing very much, uh, that's still considered kind of inappropriate. There's a sort of a prudishness in game uh, visual design, which I don't appreciate. So that's why I like him, whose name I can't remember because my god there's a lot of these people and they all have names. Uh, but yeah, I like that if you look closely you can see that he has weird scraggly pubes identical to that of his beard. Other than that, this is just another running fight with a ton of Corwood, which we've done before. Maybe that's... maybe that's not a loincloth, maybe that's just his hair. That is not a thought I wanted to have today. 
So that was a nice timely shot for our good buddy up on the ridge. Golem never helps you in fights. Um, his purpose and his position and kind of what he is is a mystery. And um, as I was saying previously, that mystery is never really answered. It's never even engaged with. All we know is he's something weird from out of time. And that's because that's not important. That's not what this story cares about. It's not what this story wants to talk about. It's not what is important to it. Also, if this guy, if these guys beat me, I will just finish this fight and then skip to the end of it. Instead of uh, having to start over. It's been now. But yeah, so, as I was saying, the things this story cares about are the characters and their motivations and why they behave the way they do. And what the different ways they behave are. This is really clear in the kind of core story, which is the mystery of what is Father Mother's secret? How did Gap find it out? How did it change things between them? And something I think is interesting is that it's so clear that, um, Almost all of the kind of narrative happened and continues to happen because Father Mother is guilty. Father Mother is clearly guilty about whatever it is their secret is. We know that Gat left because he wanted to learn about the Corwood. Father Mother didn't want Gat to go. We can see this in the opening cutscene. So. The logical conclusion from that is that Father Mother was afraid Gat would, you know, find out their secret. But it's not until Gat comes back that Gat is kind of more curious about this stuff. But Gat still didn't have that secret. We see Gat visit um, the other gang. And what they tell him is that he's not allowed around here. Father Mother's people aren't allowed around here. This is a place just for Father Mother. So that's the end of this sequence. Hey Golem, why didn't you fight? When we meet Gat's brothers, we could use a little more help. That is not how we'll help you. So it wouldn't be a Corwid party without uh, the life of the party. This guy. I do like Gabel's snazzy pot back. <laughs> I think everyone will be wearing it in the future. His AI is kind of... I'm not sure if his AI is busted or if he's supposed to run off like this, but um, it, is, it does make him hard to fight. He's less of a, of a direct threat the way he was in the previous fight with him, but it does make him difficult to fight. I think he runs to where these birds spawn in. Um, I don't know if he fights them. Playing baseball with the local fauna, that's always fun. So with a bit of luck, I'll be able to wipe him out pretty quickly. He will of course go running off to the next spawn point of these things, I think. It might be after the next uh, knockdown, I guess. Anyway, so... Father Mother assumes that Gat must be attempting to find out their secret. That's kind of the classical behaviour of a guilty conscience. But what can Father Mother's secret be? Because it's clear that Father Mother does care about their children. Okay, yeah, you better run. Not gonna eat me today. Anyway, um... So, uh... Father Mother assumes, because of their guilt, that Gat must know something or suspect something and be going to try and find out what that is. Then when Gat comes back, Father Mother assumes that that secret has been found out. Uh, in fear and terror of having that secret be revealed, you know, Father Mother uh, six Gat's uh, brothers and sisters on him, throws him out, makes him not be around here anymore. I've kind of been rambling and saying the same thing over and over, but what it boils down to is Gat left for his own reasons. Father Mother assumed that it had to be related to the secret. 
and so attacks Gat when he comes back. That prompts Gat to ultimately find out what the secret is. So all of these things kind of run in a in a big circle. Um, but everything everyone does at any given time is tied to these motivations and the interactions of these characters. Let's continue. This should be our last camp before leaving the woods. I'll go get more sticks for the fire. You should also hunt here. You need to eat. I do like Golem's snazzy cod piece. There's quite a lot of... There's a very diverse array of cod pieces in this game. What is he looking at? Anyway. So, having rambled about that... I was going to say Tangled Web, but it's really not that complicated. Uh, I'm just bad at explaining sometimes. And that's okay. There's something interesting about the guns in this game, which is that they don't operate in any way the way guns do. And I think that that's very intentional. I think that um, the ways that the guns in this game work is as if someone had replicated a gun based on watching a gun and not understanding the mechanism of how it works. They know that there's a trigger, they know that there's a magazine, or, you know, some kind of bullet holding place. They know that you put things in it, and then it goes bang, and the things fly out. But the actual mechanism isn't understood. It kind of It's kind of similar to a cargo cult in that way. It reflects that kind of thinking. Except in this world, it does work. Um, it's almost as if if this game is a painting, you know, it's a painting by someone who didn't understand what guns were, but had seen guns. Uh, there's probably a much more elegant way to put that, but I don't know what it is. But I think it lends something to the very kind of primordial feeling of the game. This the very kind of... I, I still haven't figured out a way to describe it well, but this kind of odd way that this world feels like... It isn't... It isn't kind of a modern modern world, for all that they imply. It's some kind of post-apocalyptic thing, and it's not really the way it works. Wait. Listen. Shouldn't we wait until they disperse before going in? Wanna get there before they disperse, you Teff? But still, I think the more we wait, the better the chance we have to find him alone. I knew I would find you with the Corwids! Remit, I understand how you feel. But you leave Deadra out of this. Any friend of yours is an enemy of our family. Deadra, the Corwids, or... That thing. Go get help if you want, you coward! I'll kill him! Crush them, Remit. I'll go get back up. I think this is one of the only multi-faction fights in the entire game. I think this is the only time when we actually see Father Mother's Brood and the Corwid interact. I do love that spin kick. I will always be envious of it. Also, once again, Rumat looks amazing. She's so cool. I'm gonna be like that when I grow up. So, there's actually... <laughs> It's tempting to think that the other Corwid here are coming to your aid, that maybe they do recognise Gat as one of their own and are um, picking up the fight because uh, Father Mother's brood are attacking him, but they will attack you too. This is a big battle royale with two factions and you're in neither of them. One of the difficulties with fighting Rematt is that the moves are quite hard to get the timings on. I have those staring eyes, you know? I'm gonna have to go get some hit points. I think it's probably the fight with the largest number of other people in it, but um, the fact that it is this multi-faction fight and they'll mostly fight each other is to your advantage. 
I don't think it would be viable to give you this many enemies in one uh, in one combat encounter. It does mean that as you wander through these brambles, you do just hear the sound of a birdman getting punched square on the beak constantly, uh, and mysteriously just out of shot. You know, I can accept I can accept characters not having much trouble. Um, getting back up again after getting the shit beaten out of them. It's a little bit less uh, sensible when you have characters being blown up with guns, or shot with guns, and then being fine next to them. Oh wow, I think that's a strike. So, uh, Gat's shitty clone has been disposed of, there's only a few left, but we do need to wipe out both Father, Mother's room and the poor red. There is kind of a, a kind of a tragic tone to um, Gat's interactions with the core red. It's kind of like um, kind of like imagine a child who has quote unquote friends who are really just more like bullies. It's like yeah, of course they kick the shit out of me. That's just what we do, you know. We, we all we all goof around. It's it's fine. It's 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 just horseplay. It's fun. But then actually it's all of them ganging up on one of them. I think this is the guy who likes to steal eyes. Not so tough now, are you? Ireland? Is that something? No, that's a terrible pun. He's not actually doing the spin attacks that made him so difficult to fight previously. I wonder if his AI is different or if it's just... I'm lucky because it's random, maybe? I think there's only a couple of Father Mother's people left. There's this character, who I guess is kind of Remat's shadow, the same way that uh, that one guy with the bad hair is Gat's shadow. Ah, the meaty sound of the fist impacting on the anteater's soft nose. Truly magical. haircut like this guy. It's pretty good. But yeah, Golem really never helps you in any of the fights. It's not his deal. And as to what his deal is, we will never really find out. I mean, I made some semi-facetious readings previously about what he might represent if you wanted to make a political reading of this game. But um, in terms of what was actually intended, it's all a bit myster mysterious if you ask me. Oh, wow. I've never KO'd someone with a thrown object before. Huh. I actually didn't know that could happen. I thought that throwing things didn't do damage. I thought it was just knockback. So, Henny's really cool. And, um, she's only in fights after this point. I think she's only in a couple of the fights. I need more healing. Just as the designs go, like, um, all of the unique designs are really rad, but I think hers is really cool. I am glad that women are allowed to be scrappy, dirty fighters in this, just like everybody else. Although, there's still a huge proportion, because most of the fighters are still male or masculine, and something like half of the women fighters in this game are monstrous, which, you know, is often used as a kind of a kind of a visual excuse for being allowed to beat up on someone I think she's one of the only ones who actually has decent toys as well It always feels better when you actually get one of the special moves pulled off properly. <laughs> right, I think that's everybody. Are we all sorted out? Jolly go. Oh man, I had the craziest day. You would not believe what just happened. What happened? What was your plan, Golem? You met my sisters and brothers already. When we get to hell, 
custom I can help you. I can bring peace to your home. It's clear my family will never forgive me for killing father and mother, and that's fine. But I can't let them hunt Yadra too. No, it's not fine if they hunt you, Gath. You need to tell me how it happened. Exactly what happened with father and mother. I also believe confession will be good for you, Gath. But now we must leave. And I suggest we take a different road towards Halstom, near the coast, to avoid further confrontations with your family. And that is going to be all for today. I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.